and welcome back to another History Mystery. Today we will take a look at the mystery that is the lost colony of Roanoke. It all started with Sir Walter Riley in 1584 when he was authorized by Queen Elizabeth to explore and colonize the New World. Her terms were that she would receive one-fifth of all the gold and silver mined there and that he would have his settlement established within seven years lest he have his charter revoked. His first attempt at this was in 1585 when the initial settlement was funded by Raleigh and his pals and was governed by Ralph Lane. They landed on Roanoke Island and there were 107 colonists, all men, because that makes so much sense. That attempt, however, did not pan out due to their lack of resources and their poor relationship with the local Native Americans. Raleigh again funded another settlement in 1587 and this time the colony was governed by John White. The 115 to 119 settlers were supposed to settle at Chesapeake Bay, but instead once again attempted to settle on Roanoke Island. The settlers consisted this time of men, women, and children, and even included White's own daughter, Eleanor Dare. Interestingly enough, Eleanor ended up giving birth to the first English child born in North America shortly after arriving there, and the baby's name was Virginia Dare. Within weeks of arriving, John White headed back to England to get supplies for the newly founded colony. He intended to only be gone for about a year, but he hit a couple of snags. The first came right after arriving back to England, when Elizabeth actually ordered that all ships remain docked in case they were needed to fight the Spanish Armada. They were finally given permission to leave the port in 1588 after defeating the Spanish Armada. Unfortunately, another delay came shortly after they set sail for Roanoke when White's crew decided they wanted to take a detour down to Cuba with hopes of capturing Spanish ships said to contain riches. Finally, in 1590, White and his crew landed back on Roanoke Island only to find that the colony had disappeared. The only clue left as to what happened was the word Croatoan carved into a tree. Croatoan referred to Croatoan Island, located 50 miles south of Roanoke Island. White and his crew ended up not even being able to search nearby Croatoan Island, now Hatteras Island, due to poor weather conditions and a near mutiny. I can't say I'd personally leave my daughter and brand new granddaughter along with all of the other colonists with no explanation as to their whereabouts and well-being, but I digress. It's believed the colonists likely made their way here and joined the tribe of Native Americans on the island due to their lack of resources considering White still hadn't returned. An interesting bit of evidence surrounding this theory are referred to as the Dare Stones. These stones were allegedly created by Eleanor Dare and contained stories about the colonists. However, these are most likely believed to be a hoax. There is only one stone widely believed to be truly created by Eleanor Dare. The Croatoan Archaeological Project has uncovered some archaeological evidence that also supports this theory as items that could have only belonged to English settlers were found here. This suggests they either came to live here or at the very least interacted with the tribe residing here. The actual fate of the colonists is still highly debated today. Some believe at least some of the colony departed to Croatoan, while others believe they went to the Chesapeake Bay area. There are also those that believe they starved and died off, or were possibly swept off to sea in an attempt to sell back to England. And of course, there's always the fan favorite theory that aliens were somehow involved. You know, from researching this, it seems like there is likely a perfectly plausible explanation, and I swear school had me convinced that there was no possible explanation and that they must have just poofed. So what do you guys think? I'm most inclined to believe that they assimilated with a local tribe, whether at Croatoan or further inland, and lived out their days joining ranks with the tribe. They also literally left a sign of where they were going and no one checked to see if they were actually there. So it seems as if this isn't as mysterious as it seemed at first glance. I did read that researchers were checking DNA to try and see if they could find bloodlines of those who were in the colony to definitively say that yes, they did make their way to Croatoan Island or further inland and they lived happily ever after. Well, that is all for today. 
Thank you for joining me to take a look at the history, not so mystery, that is the lost colony of Roanoke. Catch you next time.